one, two, three. Okay, that works much better. I'm good. Yep, I'm good too. My poor good. Uh, we have control here, so yeah. Do you need one specific No, no, no. No, we're boring and corporate, that's a PowerPoint. Uh, we're here to talk about stocks, bonds, and the rising issues with, oh wait, that's the wrong panel, never mind. My goal. <laughs> yes, it's the 621 rule. Uh, you gotta have six showers a day, two bottles of, wait, no, that's wrong. Uh, yeah, there's six miles walk per day, two snacks per day, one nap per day, right? Yeah. 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 No, no, it's one bottle of vodka. Uh, <laughs> don't forget, the stream is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legend. Uh, <laughs> definitely go for it. Really? My, my badge says uh, NordVPN, so. Yeah. Hottest sponsor of the summer. Uh, I think you're only have something to say about that. <laughs> anyway, yes, welcome everyone. This is the Tiny Fest Online Rise of Internet Cons panel. Uh, with us today, we have us five people here. I can't count, yes. Um, and who are we? We have the lovely and wonderful Dexan, wielder of the big red button. Uh, Dexan, do you want to explain what the big red button is? It's the button that lets me delete the server. Yes, <laughs> the entire PonyFest server with all 9,000 plus people on it. She has the big red button which says, nope, delete server. Uh, Catherine, who is... Hey, you know, Kippy's Catherine today. Yes. No, you're Catherine today. Yeah. You're, 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 you're pretend Catherine today. Give us Catherine's introduction. <laughs> yes, Catherine is the basically the creator of, like, all the tech on the back end of Tiny Fest, and unfortunately she could not make it today. I have the dumb idea. She's the only reason it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dexan goes, hey, let's try this. Cat's like, yes, let's do it! Yeah, I, I just realized sitting here that we, well, we'll get to that in a second. Yep, we have Lassus, the keeper of the goldfish over there with blue hair. Yeah, but it's out terrorizing something. It's probably just eating space needle again or something. Mm -hmm. I am like the resident Australian who loves puns. But I thought we had more than one Australian. We do have, we have lots of Australians on Star. Mm -hmm. I just cloned myself and gave them different names. And over here we have Ryuji, who is the wild central. Yeah, we, um, call him, we call him the Ryujinator. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> but then, who are we actually? Well, Dexanth here is the founder of Ponyfest. She's the one that came up with the idea of doing it, which we will get to that later on. Uh, former con chair of this small, tiny pony convention called Brainfun. I got to take it out back and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> So mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also known as Convention Mom. Because everyone's like, Mom, help me. And of course, a huge week. Being the founder of Northwest Idol Fest. Yes, it's, uh, if, if you like the old uh, Ever Free venue, you know, the Double Tree, come visit us in October. We're there now. That's uh, Ever Free Northwest's former venue. Mm. Uh, also, we have Catherine, who is here in spirit. Uh, she's basically the reason why everything works, the tech brain that created all the infrastructure and tools, and is out there hacking Gibson. Um, kudos to you if you get that reference. Uh, and then we have Lassus, who has our AD IT wizard, um, and runs way too many conventions. Uh, so, so professed. <laughs> Bug. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may recognize me from such conventions as, yes, we're going to be here all day. Yeah, you've done Cider Fest. Cider Fest, MLP, MSP, BronyCon. It's easier to list the ones Lars hasn't done. Yep, I haven't done TrodCon. Yeah. Not Trod. Or Canterlot Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, show of hands. How many people in the room know what Canterlot Gardens is? Yeah, All right, now was anyone else besides me actually there? <laughs> it was a hoot. Uh, and I am liking the current con chair of Pony Fest Online, the music lead of Everfree Northwest, so I get to wrangle up all the musicians and put them up on stage tonight and tomorrow night. And I am also on the Everfree Radio as a DJ. I get to yell at him later. <laughs> Sure. 
the, the joke there is that it's uh, pretty to love them. But yeah. Uh, and then we have Ryuji, who is our current vice chair. Um, so while I take a lot of the face of the people, Ryuji here works on their backgrounds as our tech on the uh, Printfest Online. I just make things work. Yes. I'm like the one that goes, Ryuji, do the thing. Me 2.0, Cat 2.0. <laughs> Basically. I automate our entire OS infrastructure so I never had to touch a button. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Ruji's also a current charity lead of Evergreen on Quest. So, the charity room is over at the other set of elevators and up the stairs. And a little bit. There's all the fun stuff to see and buy that will be up on the charity auction on Sunday. Sunday at 2 p.m. main events. And would you like to hop our charity this year, Ryuji? Wait, what did you say? Would you like to explain our charity this year real quick, Ryuji? Oh, yeah. For this year, Everfree 501c3, we are supporting Washington Autism Alliance and helping the Washington area. And all our proceeds are going to be helping donation efforts. And all of you here can also help as well. If you look at the comic book on the back, there's an Amazon Smile page. Mm. Yeah, and we don't have a slide for them, but Kibby is over on the other. Hi, I help keep everyone uh, in check with their sanity. We're trying to form the first Pony Fest, I think. <laughs> Kimmy's done art and PR and... Uh, are there any shoes you haven't built yet? I haven't done charity. Ah. And Kibby is also our resident meme lord. Yes. <laughs> if there was a good tweet on the BronyCon account, Kibby might have made it. But yeah, for, uh, for Pony Fest, I did the initial branding that was tossed together in like an hour. <laughs> all the other ones that you see the current logo with. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, now that we've told you who we are, what do we do? Uh, Printfest Online, it was basically one of the first online printing conventions, which was originally planned in one week. Uh, Dexam came up with the idea, and I think, what was it, eight days later? There not even. Not even. That. Four days. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that was what, wow. 2 3 a.m. following this day? No, no. We, we, 2 a.m. was when the idea came up. Then we got started the next day when I actually started pitching people at it. Yeah. It was less than a week from the first moment of what could be called serious work to actually having things starting up for the first time. Yeah. And that includes everything from like organization to schedule to the uh, website to VIPs, branding, line. every single panel. That's yeah. why we didn't have open applications the first time around because that would have taken way too long. Yeah. Even making the mascot. Shout outs, Don and Techie. Yes. Um, as you can see, we have one of the mascots there. Mm -hmm. And there is Neuralnet also, uh, one of the other con, con mascots. Uh, and then, so yeah, the idea for Printfest Online was that all the vendors were hurting because they couldn't sell their merch. So, Printfest Online was like, hey, we can have an online virtual vendor hall for people to show their stuff and then people can buy it and we can basically ship it to them. And uh, so that was the primary purpose of Printfest Online initially. It was pretty much going well, having a Discord server for vendors and all that people don't show up to cons for just vendor halls. So uh, let's build the rest of the con around that so they can pay rent. Yep. There was this little thing called COVID happening at the time. Oh yeah, COVID, that thing. Oh yes. We'll show you our timeline in one of the next slides so uh, you'll be able to see how <laughs> things progress very rapidly. Wait, there was a timeline? Yeah. There was. There I've blinked and a convention happened. Yeah, we have so many conventions. It just happened. It's like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We were created and most people thought it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're still not sure ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but so Printing First Online is a celebration of the community. It's a space for us all to get together during challenging times. And now it's just persisted even through the good times. And we still have online events, online cons, and stuff happening. So I tried to give it the Brony Con treatment, but they wouldn't let me. No, no. <laughs> we even had like an April Fool's stream where we had 
and some online games and some songs and DJs and stuff. And then, yeah, so uh, we've, we're still active. Uh, yep. As of this very moment, the Discord server says there's 8,975 members still. Okay. Wow. Oh, sweet, it's dropped below 9,000. I can stop using that old meme. <laughs> <laughs> we see like 30 people now. They'd be like, it's over 9,000. No, wait, now we can be like, it's under 9,000. It's under 9,000. So, yes, here we have the uh, Pretty Fest timeline where we pulled it the version number and then uh, what date it was. So, the very first Pretty Fest online was the 28th of March back in 2020. So, can you remember that long ago, Dave? No. No. <laughs> And then after the first one, everyone's like, well, we're still inside, let's have a second one. So we had Prenny Fest Online 2, which was oh, not even a month later. This was generally an unpopular decision and made a lot of other cons very angry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yes, another month turnaround for Prenny Fest number 3, uh, where we took everything that we learned from the first and second one, decided to forget what we learned and just do it again. <laughs> And do it from scratch. That was the first time we used the uh, fully online system. That's correct, yeah. Was that the one where you had to be medic at the end? No, that was the first one. That was yeah. the first one. Yeah, okay. And then, yeah, we had a little bit of a break before we had number four, which was in September of 2020. And it was about that time I went to Dex and said, Hey Dex, we've got this great setup already. Uh, can I just run a musician's thing and just invite a whole bunch of musicians to do a concert? And Dex was like, sure. Do I have to do any work, I think is what I asked. Oh yeah, that's right, you do ask that. And I'm like, no, I can do it all, that's fine. And then I was all cool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we had the 2020 wrap-up concert, which came with its own t-shirt, which you could buy online at the time, and it was only available for like two weeks. <laughs> and on the back of the t-shirt, it's got all the, the bands and musicians that performed at the, um, the wrap-up concert. And I think we had something like 110 t-shirts sold in total for that one. And um, once they covered the cost of the t-shirts, all the money went to charity. Um, so yeah, that was a big chunk of money that ended up going to charity as well uh, for that wrap-up concert. And then, well, we hadn't, have, we didn't have another pony con yet. So I'm like, hey, Dex, can I run that concert again? This time it was like a summer, summer concert. And Dex is like, <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore, do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Exact words. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, those were the exact words. Was... So we had the uh, summer concert, which was in June of 2021. And we had that t-shirt over there with the art done by Rotten Tuple, was it? Yes. Yes. Um, inspired by the whole Bashujos, where they were doing the whole pony thing and the humanized. If you've seen those Kotobukiya statues, it's done up in that same style. Yeah. So that's the black shirt over there. And then it was at this point where Dex was like, you can take over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was like, I have an IRL convention I'm running again because I hate myself. But I hate myself not so badly that I'm going to do two at once. Here you go. What convention was that? Uh, the, this thing called Northwest Idol Fest. Like, if you've been in the old Double Tree that you know this con used to be in, we were like, we like that venue and stole it. Yeah. So we had the. Uh, so that was when I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to put on number five. So we put on Pretty First Online Five, which was in February of twenty one. And then again, I'm like, well... February and October are very far apart. You may want to check your dates. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, October. That's right. Sorry, I'm Australian, so it's backwards. <laughs> Every day upside down. Yeah, that's it. And upside down. Um, yes, October. And then uh, we actually teamed up with Prennyville FM at that point, and we did a concert in conjunction with them. And that's where this t-shirt came in. And so the pretty best mascots there, and then the uh, pretty villa fan one is over there. Yep, Ariel. Ariel. I like it just has that pony fest drip. <laughs> and uh, one thing we kept getting asked was, which one's the main stage? Because we had one for the DJs and one for basically the live musicians. And we're like, 
There is no main stage. Just choose which one you want to go to. They're both the main stage. Yeah, they both are. And I yeah. think at one point, uh, just to give you some idea, both stages were playing Discord at one point. <laughs> yeah. One was like an acoustic version on a guitar, and the other one I think was like some speed core version of Discord. So, yeah, it was. It, hmm. There really was no main stage. It was just pick yeah, the uh, it's actually interesting. That's a uh, very festival style. If you've ever been to a major music festival, you'll probably have somewhere between six and eight stages that are all playing simultaneously. And while some do have a designated main stage, some just have a bunch of stages and you go find the style of music that you want to listen to at that time. Yeah, so that, that was basically um, the point for that concert. And then uh, we decided to put on an April Fool's event <laughs> um, where we had Jackbox games, we had some DJs, uh, we invited Rip Ponies back, which again may have been a mistake. Um, <laughs> but no, it was April Fool's and everyone just had you know a blast being silly. Narrator, it was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, and then most recently in June we had the Pony Fest Japan PonyCon, where we actually teamed together with Japan PonyCon, and we did combination with their concerts, and they also created a video of like their um, entire vendor hall and some of the stuff that they had on main stage and whatnot for the Japan PonyCon, and we blasted that out to the world saying, "Hey, look, this is what Japan did," um, and yeah, it was it was great. I like it. You forgot one. Oh yes, yes. No, <laughs> we did not include that one. At one point, we had the Everfree Network takeover, where Everfree Network decided, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Never happened. Yep, no, yeah, never, never happened. happened. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's that? On again. So yeah, Everfree Network took over the whole Pony Fest stuff and just went streaming for. What was meant to be in a one hour panel that ended up being about five hours. It was Final Draft's great comeback event. that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's, uh, I remember that generating a lot of panic of, is the FN coming back? Uh, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I yeah. did the... <laughs> yes, so uh, that, that also happened, the Everfree Network takeover. Um, right, so, and that brings us to where we are today. Uh, with Instant Con Memes. If there is an internet, there are going to be memes, uh, and we had plenty of them. Uh, one of the very first ones that came from Pony Fest Online was Fuff. <laughs> Say it with us, Fuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, it still persists. I mean, you know the problem now is that we're not going to stop hearing it from this crew until we're done now, right? Yeah, pretty much. What was the backstory on that one, Lycan? Okay, so, um... It was a bad fanfic reading panel, and the bad fanfic included, you know, the corruption of, I believe, the word fun, and people on the internet being people on the internet, they were like, that's stupid, let's run it into the ground. <laughs> if I remember right, Techie made a drawing of our mascot, just saying, like, it's gonna be so much fuff, and then yeah. it just took off. It, that, that's basically what it was. It was an internet fanfic reading from Rift Ponies, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of like, oh, this will be so much fun, it's, this is so much fun. And every time they said the word fun, it was fun. And <laughs> it just carried on. So now on. when you meet Rift Ponies, you can blame them. Yes. Yes, and do so harshly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we just brought it to the world, but it's totally their fault. <laughs> It was like, you know, space balls were like, there's a merchandising opportunity here. And then we paused and realized, oh crap, we're not selling merchandise. Oops. <laughs> uh, but we've come a long way. This was like the very first iteration of that website with text <laughs> saying, hey, we are a thing with some art and being like, yes, we exist. That is archaic looking. Pay attention to the logo. Please. It's a unicorn in that one. Yeah, yep. The logo was a unicorn even, even though our mascot was not. Um, and then here we are today at the, the most recent of the uh, major events that we hosted. So that was the Pony First PVFM concert. And as you can see, it's nice and streamlined and it looks pretty. Uh, also, the art there is by Haunted Tuba, and that's actually a GIF, so if you go there, it's like typing away um, with both uh, mascots there, so it's really cool. 
That's not the good version of the gift, or the realistic one for us on the back end. Oh, the fire one? Yeah, the fire yeah. one. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, the Haunted 2 but also took that gift and just added fire all over it, and was like, hey, this is actually how Pony Fest is. Um, at one point, we almost, was it your computer that we, yes, opened? my computer literally died halfway through the streaming event. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we're streaming, and then we're like, there's no streaming, or Ryuji, what's happening? It's like, my computer's on fire! <laughs> It literally thermal shut down. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um, Note so. to self, never have all the OBSs on one machine. <laughs> hey, Ryuji, yeah, do you remember the first Pony Fest where it was all on my machine? Yes, I remember. <laughs> he See, the truth was, he actually opened up a third Chrome tab. <sighs> Stop. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we've come a long way, and this was the original stream setup diagram. As you can see, we have Google Sheets, which goes into a pony uh, uh, If right? you're a programmer, this makes sense to you. If you're not a programmer, ow, I'm not a programmer. Yeah, it's special boxes. This is our entire infrastructure. It may be nice for a tech person, but can be a little overwhelming for everyone. It, all it is is we're controlling two streams. Well, what the magic text basically means is we don't have to turn the stream off to switch to the next panelist. It turns out that that was a surprisingly harder activity to achieve than I initially thought. <laughs> which is why Catherine spent an entire month between Pony Fest 1 and 2 making it happen. Yep. <laughs> and, and originally we did RTMP, and the newer version we do is SRT with Rainbow Derpy over in the back who helps out on the Ponytown side. Yes. Yes, and in this case, SRT is not a subdivision of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a subdivision of Dash, Rainbow. Yes. But, but the way to actually summarize that uh, diagram, just go back one. The way to summarize that diagram is uh, streaming things come to us, and streaming things go out to the world. That, that's, that's the summary of that. We have a fancy web page. Wait, wait, step, step one, streaming things come to us. Step two, question mark. Step three, it goes out. Yeah. 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 The, the question mark is actually a web browser that people just select which feed and then this magically appeared. That's how it is. All right, so uh, what are we doing now? Well, we actually have plans for another Pony Fest online this year. All right, I'm out. Yes. I already quit. <laughs> what number Pony Fest will that be? Just to reiterate. This will be Pony Fest number six. So Unless we don't patch it in time, then it's 5.9827. <laughs> I like that number. Is there a service pack in there too, or are we actually not deploying that in time? That's 5.9827.1. Ah, okay. But we should also tell you what date that's going to be, because we have locked in a date for that too. Is going to be the Saturday, the 15th of October. Right. So, we are going to have the theme as some Halloween themed spookiness. <laughs> Spoopy. Spoopy. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, we're hoping to get some uh, voice actors along, and we've got some really cool plans in the mix. Uh, and we have two months to get it done, which is like slightly more time than we did for the first one. Uh, like, eight times as much time. You're welcome. <laughs> that amount of time would have been great, Dex. That's not how I roll. <laughs> Lars, how did, how did those calls go from Dex? It was four days before Pony Fest happened. Hey, I want to make an event. No, it was, it was a week. It was on the Saturday when yeah, I was, was talking to the two of you. It, it was on the Saturday. The problem was that as we, we've had lots of these calls over the years, and it was always hypothetical, so I went away from them thinking, okay, I'll probably just write something up that's a hypothetical, and then the next day, hey, did you hatch this out? It's just like, oh, this is actually happening. This, this is a real problem. Mm. And one of, the, one of the things that I can keep getting asked is like, how do we run? And one of the best things about it is that it's all just uh, through the Discord, and, um, Volunteer staff. People are like, yeah, we'd we'll love to volunteer our time and help out. And uh, yeah, that's basically how we came from at the very first number one to now. It's still all just volunteer time. Much as I want to get rich off of brony dollars, this is not the way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
Have we ever turned a profit? I don't think we ever have. That would require us to charge money for the Yes, it would. That's, one, that's why we never make a profit on it, it's because it's free for all of you to come and enjoy it as you want. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the things about it is that it, the stream will always be free to just tune in, watch, see what we've got going on. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely uh, one thing about us. But in, in two years, we're going to introduce microtransactions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It will be. No, no. Don't, we don't <laughs> say the for, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't say the forbidden uh, word. I, 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 got, I said microtransactions, something that's marginally respectable, not garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it should go without saying, though, that many pony fests would not have happened without all of you guys and everybody else that attended online. Yeah. Like, thank you. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Well, in the midst of the pandemic, everyone was inside, and so, uh, yeah, thanks to Dex for creating it. Thanks to Ryuji for helping me continue it. So, um, and there's still plenty of people that still can't get out there to cons for various different reasons. You know, pandemic is still happening. Um, some countries still haven't opened up their borders yet. We can't go to Japan, I think it is. They've still got closed borders, I believe. Yes, it's very irritating. I can't go back for concerts and this upsets me. Yep. Uh, it took me three years to get out of Australia to get here, so <laughs> last time I was here was 2019. Um, even though Everfree was last year, uh, we couldn't make it out because we couldn't get back into Australia. So that's why, uh, yeah, it's taken three years. So there is still a need for online training cons. And that's the other thing too, is that even for live events like this one, we actually pioneered a few things that like this convention right now is using. Main events over there is on Ponytown. We created that as a standard feature as being able to put a convention stage on Pony Dog Town. Yes, and thanks to Rainbow Dick for that too. Yes, seriously. All of you. Uh yeah, so things like that of the infrastructure to stream it out is just being phenomenally useful for everyone. Uh, Hug your friends who are engineers and tell them how much you love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. I think that's about it for the future. We might start up with some Q and A. Um, so, if you have any questions for us, uh, whether it be about the past of uh, Pony Fest Online or where we're going or anything we're doing at the moment, uh, feel free to ask. Kibi, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> when does Pony Fest 10 happen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be uh, March 13th, 2027. I thought it was going to be 20XX. Oh. 20XD6. <laughs> Someone over there is the hand. Have you guys heard about Ponies Online? Yes. Ponies yes. Online, yes. And I don't like, do you ever collaborate or try to talk to them or something? Um, a lot of the times, uh, these conventions want to do their own thing. Um, you might also be familiar with uh, Midair Pony Fair. Yeah, they, they also were just like, no, we want to do it as over there. And we're like, okay, sure. Um, so we have offered to like, oh, do you want to use our server, that kind of stuff. Like, no, no, we want to do it ourselves. So, um, yeah. Hypothetically, the original idea after Pony Fest 1 was to start hosting the other physical cons that had to virtualize, but for reasons that did not happen, and so we kept on doing our own thing instead of being our sort of the venue for other cons to do their thing. Hmm. But I think some of these cons did use the Basically, yes. What it was is they went, oh my god, our, our efforts to do this on our own aren't working. Catherine, save us. <laughs> so Catherine. you probably would have seen a few of them being like, uh, what was it, BabsCon presented by PronyFest Online. Basically, if you saw an online stream force con outside of, I think, TrotCon, it was probably Catherine's magic that enabled it to happen. Yeah, we did a... She pretty much single-handedly kept the fandom online for about a year and a half. That was Soderfest this? Yes. Yeah. Yes, cinnamon bun. <laughs> so internally we had this joke about that because he always stepped it up every time. And during one of the last ones, it was like, 
Okay, so he's going to start a stream in what looks like a large warehouse until the loading ramp behind him lowers down and you realize that he's in the back of a C-17 in flight and he just face jumps out of the back of it. Yeah. Did he actually do that? No, he didn't actually no. do that. Ooh, I mean, it, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I wouldn't either. But he's going to be here, who knows, he might set the building on fire and just make the best show that we've ever seen. Yes, he is actually part of the musician lineup. So he, he did do one at a horse track, right? I'm not forgetting he that. Did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Terrible line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was right at the finish line and used the big LED wall behind him to mm -hmm. create all the graphics and stuff. Um, yep. He's also done it from the back of a uh, ute, you guys would call it a truck, with like cows mm. falling a stream <laughs> from the back of a ute, mate. Yeah, that's basically. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my favorite one is actually the first one he did, which uh, it was outdoors. And normally if you do that, you're going to run an extension cord. Not him, no. He did that completely off of solar energy and with a battery pack. No and the reason why it has ended the way it did is his batteries actually ran out of power while he was DJing. Yeah. You, you can actually uh, hear them beeping because they're that low on power. And uh, that's when he ends the stream, his terms, instead of just out because... Ah. I was going to say, I wish y'all could see the staff chats when we were talking to that dude, like each time he was going to go to do his set, because every time it was just, I I'm sorry, you're going to be performing where? <laughs> you're, you're out in the field? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. But at Ponyfest, we have a can-do attitude called, this sounds like a terrible idea, it's perfect for us, let's do it. <laughs> this is terrible, let's do it. But we've had lots of departments, we have online gaming, we had tabletop gaming, we, we had writers' rooms, uh, artists have streamed on Mikado, mm -hmm. we've had the mainstream, the secondary stream, the Neuronet one, with all sorts of events. Uh, we've had Lena Hall as, as one of the guests, um, Raquel Belmonte as well. We've had quite a few. It was really easy when COVID was happening. It's like, you're locked up at home too and are bored. Want to come have entertainment for an hour? <laughs> and it turns out a lot of VIPs like that offer. <laughs> yeah, so they're just like, sure, let's do this. Then everyone else is like, I see what Ponyfest is doing. Hey, I want to come. And then you start to having to find ways to give them money again. Mm -hmm. yeah. After the first one, Dex, did you ever have anyone outside the fandom reach out to you or Kat? Um, I don't think so. I did pay attention to basically every online con and I can say that like most of them did not understand the medium. Mm. Most people, and I'm like, I can throw shade on Anime Expo here because I love doing that, to take an example of here's a con that has literal